Well, hello there. How's it going? This is Nico from Horticulture, and today we are going to take a look at the songwriting and the arrangement of the song The Price of Fame. Let's check it out. The entire song, uh, you might not be surprised to hear, was inspired by that main sound. That guy right there. Very simple, just basically a minor scale ascension, for those of you who like to talk about boring music theory stuff. Uh, let me pull up the synth here real quick. So this, what you're seeing right now, is a software synth called Serum. But uh, yes, in this case, I was just going through presets and I stumbled across just this factory preset, meaning it's a, a preset that's a default that comes with the software. And right away, it inspired a feeling. In this case, I was just having fun. It was like, let's just try another preset. Cool, next, blah, blah, blah. next, blah, blah, blah. these are the actual sounds I played. Blah, blah, blah. And then I came across this. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, it has like an old feel to it. It has that, if you can hear the pitch drift, so it's kind of wobbly, it's going back and forth, like This is one thing that I do uh, uh, quite a lot. And I've actually done this in, in our previous band, Invinity, where I will take a repeating phrase, um, what's also called an ostinato, just a simple repeating melody line, and then change the root note around underneath it, which then makes the repeating pattern feel different on those different um, bass note changes, which I think is, I always love that kind of stuff. So we start on the root, and it was like, okay, what happens if we go down a whole step? How does that sound? Good, I like that. So the verse became just switching between the B and the A. That's, that's just kind of what started the whole thing. And I was like, cool, I like that. And eventually I added in, um, where is it? Let's do this. Eventually I added in kick drum, just to start kind of feeling what, okay, let's put a four on the floor on this. Let's see how it's going. And then I found a really good sound for the bass, which is this guy. Has, like, I think in the final version we have a little bit more of a delay on it, so it's da 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 da. Almost sounds like it's a double note, but it's just a single note with with a little bit of delay on it. I was like, okay, I like that. Playing with these two things, so we had that, and then eventually just the that and the kick drum. And I put that bass, of course, on the upbeats. It's like this is cool. Give it some movement. And it's like, okay, well, where do we go from here? So far, this is all I have. Where do we, <laughs> where do we go with this? And naturally, as I said, the first thing that I want to do is start changing the root note so we can develop it into some sort of chord pattern. And like I said, we started with the B and went down to the A. So then it became. That's the verse. Where do we go for a chorus? Do we write something totally different? Or do we keep this vibe? Because I really, really like the vibe, right? I really like, why do I say right? <laughs> like asking you if that's what my opinion is, right? That's how I feel. Um, I love this vibe. It's so simple, but there's a, it evokes some emotion. At least it does for me. Well, what if we just keep this? Like, this is sort of the motif of the song. This really simple minor scale ascension. But we change the root note again. We try to find a different chord pattern. So rather than starting in the key of B minor and the root note is B, I like to either start a whole step below or go down a third or a minor third, major third, fourth, fifth, uh, try something different to to signify a change. Because if the, if the verse starts here and the chorus starts here, they feel exactly the same, at least upon the start of it. 
Um, so I like to signify subconsciously to the listener that this is a new section. Something new is happening, which is why I was messing around. I was like, okay, because sometimes you just fuck around and find out, <laughs> as the graph suggests. So it's... And once I had that, I was like, okay, that, I like the vibe of that. We're keeping that ostinato going, but we're changing the root note in the chorus. And now it has this building feeling. We're going somewhere, but then it comes back down. Let's take a look at some other layers we started adding in the chorus section. So once we had things like, let's see, bass, and let's do a kick drum. Where are you, buddy? I also ended up adding this higher layer. So there's two different layers of bass, by the way. Let's take a look at this. Let's pull that up. So that's the high layer. You can see it says bass high. Versus. Now why would you have a high bass? That seems counterintuitive, right? Basses are supposed to be low. So one thing that I like to do a lot is I like to have a double of the bass part, but an octave higher and sort of gently mix that into it. And the reason for that is if we just use low notes for the bass, sure, it feels good if you have a good sound system, good headphones, things like that. But you often won't be able to hear some of those chord changes and some of those root note changes on a, let's say, a phone, like I'm recording on right here. You won't be able to hear some of those notes. And to double them with the octave higher, while you still have the low notes to bring out the low end, having that extra octave really helps to audibly bring out what the key change is or what the note is or what the chord change is. Um, I think that helps out quite a lot, especially on small devices. So I do that quite a bit. And there's also a third layer of bass. I have a sub bass. So let's take a listen to what Mr. Subby Bassy does. So this is the one that kind of does the whoop, 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 whoop. So it still has that against the beat, hitting all the um, upbeats on this song, but it has that uh, very EDM-y swell, rip, 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 almost like a reverse sound to it. So these sounds, plus all the extra layers we did in the studio with Eric, because he always adds multiple layers of stuff to really enhance stuff, really became the anchor of that. Now, we also have, I was like, okay, cool, we have that. We also have this little pad layer here. We'll make it loud. So you might hear that pad actually sounds a little late in terms of like rhythm when it's actually going. It doesn't actually line up with that. That's just a, a little technical thing um, just because of the demo. So don't worry about that. The final version, it doesn't do that. It actually hits on the beat. But the point was just to show the sound. As I said, demo version, please forgive me. What else do we have? Yes. So you know what else we have? Do you? Do you know? So another melody we start bringing in is this little guy. Love that sound. Uh, sort of crystal, almost fantasy sort of sound. And again, I like to generally build things up in layers even before I've arranged the song in terms of like it goes from here to here to here to here, and here's how it gradually builds up, and these layers are not here, but they come in later. Often I'll start with a big vertical stack of here's all of the layers that I eventually want to add, and then I will duplicate it a lot, 
and then start to take things out and add things in where I want them to come in and over time. And that's getting a little bit into the arrangement and I want to talk about that, but just in a second. But then we wanted something faster, at least I did, to really add more physical and rhythmic movement. And that brings us to this guy. And then here's how it sounds on the chorus. So I want to quickly, before we go to the vocals, I want to quickly touch on the arrangement. And once I had this little melody thing that I, we've already messed around with, da, 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 I wanted to build it because I really liked how it sounded very quietly with just the little bass sound against it without a kick drum. Just sometimes people's ears will go to where that bass sound is and think that it is not the upbeats but the downbeats. So if we just have that sitting by itself and once the kick drum finally comes in, it suddenly flips the song kind of upside down in their minds like a little audio illusion and I love stuff like that. So that's why we started the song with this um, completely drum free thing and it sort of builds up and I also like the idea that we're gradually building this song over time that some of these layers don't even come in till much later like that little crystal -y synth thing and that um that faster synth arpeggio that we just looked at those don't even come in until not quite halfway through the song but almost getting close to it so it, there's a feeling of progression there's a feeling that we're building not only with that building aspect of that da 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 which is constantly going up right and even in the baseline of the chorus there is a feeling of building to something. Well, the arrangement does it too, with the way that the layers continually start to add on in every every section. Um, every time we come back to the chorus, there's a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and we are building toward this, this ending piece of it. So yes, so that's a little bit about the arrangement. Let's take a look at the vocals. We have something, hopefully, kind of interesting to show you. I keep saying we. So in the process of writing music, one of the most important parts to me is coming up with a very, very strong, hooky, catchy vocal line, especially on the chorus. To me, that is what anchors the entire song, and if it doesn't earworm the fuck out of you, then we didn't do it right. So sometimes it takes me several tries to find that thing that I think works best, the thing I go, oh, that's the thing. That's the fucking, that's the melody. Um, I spend a lot of time agonizing and trying different melodies and trying, okay, let's try something different. Oh, that's close. I like the first half, but not the second half. Let's try something else. And eventually make my way toward whatever the final version is. But I have a few, actually more than one, different chorus vocal melody to show you. So let's see what this sounds like. So this, here's what... Um, the vocal melody that I first tried on the chorus sounds like. And remember, these are all nonsense words. I don't know if you know my process, but I will just sing. I will literally sing spontaneously whatever words come to my mind. I don't try to make a coherent sentence. I'm literally just trying to create a good melody and a good and good phrasing rhythmically for that melody. But here we go. Here's my first attempt at coming up with a melody. Take my passion, take my skin. What you get is what you get Take my passion, take my skin What you get is what you give Take my passion, take my skin What you get is what you give 
Take my passion, take my skin What you get is what you give Very different, yeah? So there you go, there's a potential one. And I also started recording some harmonies to see what it would sound like if I used this vocal melody once I wrote full lyrics. What would it sound like? So I'll just do, we'll do a little bit shorter this time, but. Take my passion, take my skin. What you get is what you give. Take my passion, take my skin. What you get is what you give. Now there's something that in retrospect kind of clues me into how I landed at the final vocal melody. And that is what I'm doing in the harmony on the second half. Let me show you. So let's just listen to this in isolation. Take my passion, this take is just the harmony. Skin, what you get is what you give. Take my passion, now listen for the second half. Here we go. Ready? Skin, what you get is what you give. Does that sound slightly familiar? It's not, the, it's not the same notes, but that sort of dissension, that like melodic dissension on the second half is actually kind of similar to what I ended up with um, with the Pick Your Poison, Choose Your Pain, that downward melody. And I, I think, you know, looking at this, I think that's what actually inspired me to, I, I think I listened to him like, you know what? I like that concept. Let me try that again with something slightly different. That's how I landed at the, uh, the final version of the vocals. But I have another one. I have another vocal line that didn't make it. You ready? And this is very different than the first one. Still not the final. Let's see what this one sounds like. That is the second attempt, and I don't think I recorded any test harmony vocals for that melody, but I, it definitely sounds like it would need it, um, at least to me. And I think I had, as I said, gone back to the first one and really liked some of the stuff in that harmony. <laughs> I was like, well, maybe I could make that the final version. All right, so this is the final version, and I believe, I haven't listened to this particular take yet, I think this is where I started to get some words that I liked. I liked the feel and the sound and the uh, intent of the words, but not the whole sentence yet. So this might have some older placeholder words in the phrase, but this is where I finally got the melody. It's the price, the price of fame, of fame. Never getting what Different. you give is the price, the price of fame, of fame. Never getting what you give is the price, the price of fame, of fame. Never getting what you give is the price, the price of fame, of fame. Never getting what you give. But there you go. So we have some of that. And then, once we finally got Mr. Sven to sing on the song, um, I just, you know, I had to initially think about, well, shit, Sven said he would, you know, help us out and sing on a song. How do we do that? What parts does Sven sing? What parts do I sing? What part does Eric sing? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Ah! Um, but then I kind of realized, you hear on that version of the final melody, at least, that I'm just repeating myself. It's the price, the price of fame, of fame. I liked the doubling. I already had the double effect going before Sven was even on it. So I, I was intent on, I was gonna sing it, but that double would have been either like affected or quieter, like an echo, or maybe Eric would just do the echoes, but that was always gonna be there. And because of that, I was like, wow, this chorus lends itself very naturally to having 
two different singers, and especially if they can kind of do that sort of um, echo each other. You know, one person, the price, the price of fame, of fame. <laughs> I'm trying to do a Sven impression. Pick your poison, choose your pain. It's the price, the price of fame, of fame. Pick your poison, choose your pain. It, with that ABAB thing, I think, I think you may disagree, but I thought it worked out really well, surprisingly, that it wasn't even written to be that way at the beginning, at least for two singers. Um, you know, and then, of course, we put him on multiple things because he kept volunteering to sing. He's like, I, I'll, I'll sing more than that if you want. I'm like, cool. Would you mind doing a whole verse? He's like, yeah, that'd be great. He's like, I'd still be up for other stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, how about we'll go back and forth at the end, and how about you take the lead on the bridge section? And then he even volunteered, which I thought this was lovely. He even volunteered those little harmony double lines that are on the, the third verse. So I sang the main on the third verse, but he doubles happiness. That was, that was his own idea. He came up with those. He's like, hey, I gave some, gave you some extra stuff. If you want to use it, don't use it. Tally up to you. See what you think. And was like, as soon as I listened to it, I was like, this is fucking great, dude. Thank you. Love it. So there we go. There's a little bit of a look at the arrangement and the songwriting and the melodies, layers, and things that go into The Price of Fame. Plus, as you heard, some alternate vocal takes and melodies. So hopefully some of that was interesting and it didn't bore the living shit out of you. But with that, I will let you go and do whatever the hell you're going to do with the rest of your day. And I have stuff to do as well. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. See you. Bye.